There she is. Yeah. Okay, Ebony, we're going to hear your presentation for the Diversity Genome Research Center's concept. Good afternoon, everyone. I am presenting the Diversity Genomes Research Center concept on behalf of my colleagues, Thorgetta Schools, the Training Diversity and Health Equity Office, and the Extramural Research Program staff who helped develop as well as refine the concept. So um, just as a reminder, a couple of years ago, NHGRI completed a multi-year process um, to develop the strategic vision for the next 10 years of human genomics. And a part of that process was um, developing guiding principles and values for human genomics. We also um, developed an action agenda for building a diverse genomics research um, workforce. And um, thank you to Dr. Bernard who touched on the action agenda. Sorry. Okay, so um, one of the reasons for the action agenda is that the genomics workforce is not a reflection of the US population. Um, and we now know that diverse investigators bring in innovative ideas and increase objectivity in research. And research has shown that minority serving institutions award 25% of all science PhDs, MDs, and health professional degrees to blacks and Hispanic students each year but NHGRI does not have a strong track record of funding minority serving institutions. So what we did was we went back and looked at NHGRI's grant funding in the last 10 years. And these are grants funded to minority serving institutions in the last 10 years. As you see, we've only funded 63 grants in fiscal years 12 through 16. And that's out of about, 100, about 850 grants that were funded during that time. Um, in the um, next five years, fiscal years 17 to 21, we funded a little bit more, but we increased our grant funding to about 1,100 grants during that time. So if you then look at the institutions that received less than 25 million research project grants. So removing the institutions that receive over the 25 million, which we um, looked at, and that was mainly three institutions um, that qualified as minority serving institutions because they fit the criteria of having a 25% minority student population. They did not have a mission to serve underrepresented populations. When you remove those three institutions, it falls down to single digits. And then if you focus on the minority serving institutions with a historical mission to serve underrepresented populations, we've only funded one in the last 10 years. And that was one HBCU, a historically black college and university. We have not funded any tribal colleges and universities in NHGRI's history. So to increase the diversity in the genomics workforce, we are proposing the Diversity Genome Research Centers. These centers would support the development of innovative genomic research projects, the formation of interdisciplinary research teams, and infrastructure building. It will also enhance research capacity for a diverse genomics workforce and increase access to diverse populations in genomics research. The scope and objectives for the concept are to increase diversity in the genomics research workforce by supporting genomic research infrastructure enhancement, enabling the formation of interdisciplinary research teams, and facilitating cutting edge genomic research at minority serving institutions with a mission to serve historically underrepresented populations. These centers will develop two to three interrelated research projects that address the critical issues in genomics. And the research experiences and capacity building will be built on top of each of those research projects. The centers can propose one or more of the scientific areas that NHGRI supports, such as genomic technology and methods development, genome structure, genome function, genomics of disease, the use and impact of genomic information in clinical care, LC research, or, and or computational genomics. So I'm just gonna show you a schematic. We're proposing two funding opportunities. Um, so potential minority serving institution applicants, if they have a developed genomic capacity and infrastructure, they would be able to come in for the full scale genome research center opportunity. 
And these centers would could include cores for administration, research capacity, and, and community engagement. Actually, they would include cores that will be required. And these cores are structured around those genomic research projects. The monitor serving institution will need to be the lead for the cores as well as the research projects. And they can request up to five years total for this funding announcement. For institutions that are a little bit less developed, um, we, are, we are providing a phased approach to becoming full scale. In the first phase, there will be planning and development. They will set their milestones as well as have administrative review to assess the capability of becoming a full scale research center. If the milestones are met and the review is successful for the center, they then will go on to be full scale. But if the milestones are not met or if they don't receive a good score at review, we're hoping that the planning and development will enable the institutions to still be able to be competitive for other RFAs, R1 opportunities, or funding from other organizations. So in the phased approach, the first phase, they can request up to one to three years. And in this phase, they would develop plans for the full scale center. And that includes formulating protocols, procedures and equipment needs, um, recruiting staff, identifying and providing solutions for any problems that they foresee and testing protocols and procedures. In phase two, they could request up to five years and that depends on the length of their phase one. And in phase two, they would implement the plans developed during phase one, and they would need to operate at full scale by the second year of phase two. The um, UG3, UH3 opportunity, the total project period is seven years. So we are um, allowing collaborations with research intensive institutions and industry, but 70% of the center budget will need to go to that lead MSI. The collaborations will be required within the research center, so um, within the institution, and they will be encouraged between the diversity research, um, the diversity genome research centers and other NHGRI consortia. Collaborations must provide the complete capacity needed to carry out the research projects, as well as the didactic and practicum experiences. And there will be two meetings a year um, within the consortium. So successful diversity genome centers would carry out innovative genomic research studies. They'll foster career development and enhancement for trainees and investigators. They'll enhance institutional genomic research capacity as well as genomic infrastructure, computational and analytic capability within their institutions. They'll enable investigators to be successful in competitive extramural support for genomic research outside of the center funding as well as establish sustainable partnerships with stakeholders to increase collaboration and disseminate the resources and findings from the centers. So I um, touched on the strategic vision and action agenda at the beginning of the presentation. And I just wanna point out that this proposed um, program aligns with the guiding principles and values as it will maximize the usability of genomics for all um, members of the public. It champions the diverse genomics workforce, as well as embracing the interdisciplinary and team-oriented nature of research. It also aligns with goals in the action agenda. It'll develop and support training programs and networks that connect undergraduate and graduate education to careers in genomics, as well as supporting training and career development for transition programs that lead to independent research and careers in genomics. The budget for the concept is pretty modest. It's 42 and a half million over seven years. We have built in scenarios for phase for not all of the phase one orties to achieve phase two. And um, phase one would be, uh, we're estimating about 300,000 total costs a year to support the um, planning and for the full scale center. And then they would, um, full scale would be 2 million um, per year total cost with 500 direct costs in the first year of their full scale for any equipment and infrastructure needs. Happy to answer any questions that you all have. Our discussants are Kyle Brothers and Gail Jarvik. Kyle, do you want to um, start out? Sure. <clears throat> So uh, I'll just start by saying I'm um, a, a big supporter of this concept. I think, um, 
you know, I, I don't think you said it, Ebony, but it, it's in the uh, concept itself that um, one in four um, science uh, doctoral degree and health professions doctoral degree um, that go to uh, Black and Hispanic students are uh, put out by these organizations. So, you know, it really highlights that when if you're, if you're trying to build a diverse genomics workforce, these organizations are going to be key partners in, in doing that. So I think um, uh, setting up a, uh, an opportunity for these organizations is, is really a super idea. Um, also, uh, maybe it just goes without saying that many of these organizations have very strong relationships with underserved communities. They're uh, located physically in underserved communities many times. And so again, um, just another great opportunity to achieve, um, you know, one dimension of um, NHGRI's strategic aims. Um, I do have one suggestion. It's sort of a supportive suggestion. Um, the uh, UG3 FOA for the developmental um, centers in phase one <clears throat> currently have a $300,000 proposed budget. Um, but I, I really would encourage you to consider increasing that. Um, I just think about you know, the, the aim of building infrastructure, these organizations, a lot of that work, you know, typically at uh, organizations with really large endowments or sort of you know, a lot of extra funds floating around, you know, there's a lot of in-kind and, and call share kinds of contributions to that infrastructure building. And, and I think some of these organizations might not have that kind of opportunity in the way that some other larger or well-funded uh, organizations will have. So I really think um, it will be important to help the uh, internal stakeholders at those organizations to be able to make the case that uh, they're bringing in um, funds that are um, worth the organization also investing in. So. Uh, it strikes me that 300,000 might be too, too little to really create that um, momentum at, at the awarded organizations. So anyway, uh, that's really the only suggestion I have. Otherwise, um, I think this is a great idea. Thank you so much, Kyle. Gail? Yeah, so I, like Kyle, I'm extremely enthusiastic about this proposal. It's a very, very uh, challenging problem, and this is a really creative approach to try and increase the diversity of the workforce. I think that it makes sense to have these institutions be the leaders in these, I think it makes sense for them to be able to partner, but not, you know, not just in name, but actually, you know, run the work. And, and I, so I think it's a very, a very thoughtful approach. I um, particularly like the ability to have a planning grant. I don't necessarily think that more than 300,000 honestly is needed for the planning phase because the next phase uh, is higher, but um, I don't have a strong opinion either way about that. But I think that the ability to have a planning phase is essential for this kind of a program for people who are going to enter a new territory for them that we want them to enter. And then the other thing, I mean, this is really like, what do I like best about something that I love? But the other thing that I'm really happy to see is the emphasis on community engagement. And I think this is something we are all trying to learn to do and that this program could really have leadership in that area. So I'm very enthusiastic about that. So as I said, you know, what do I like most? <laughs> Thank you, Gail. Any other comments or suggestions, questions? Oh, Lisa, Lisa Parker's hand is up. Lisa. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ebony. Um, I had a question about sort of sheer numbers of potential applicants. So do we have a sense of how many institutions would qualify as or be described as having more developed uh, genomics research capacity at this point in time? We did do some um, engagement of minority um, serving institutions to um, understand the needs um, and the um, and 
the equipment and what what kind of genomics research was going on. And there is a um, a number of institutions. I would say out of the institutions that we engaged, it's somewhere in the teens that could possibly come in. I would say maybe eight to twelve institutions could come in who. Um, if we have the cutoff of um, not receiving more than 25 million, if we, um, it'll be much more than that if we don't have a cutoff. But um, there is a significant amount of institutions that would be able to come in that do have the infrastructure if they would like to um, come in for this funding opportunity. Thank you. And I am now seeing, I, I'm only seeing three people at a time. So I don't know if Hal or Iftikhar are first or if I'm missing someone else. It's Hal first and Iftikhar. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I too could not be more enthusiastic um, about this program. Um, I'm hoping that efforts will be made uh, to ensure that the collaboration between less experienced and more research intensive institutions is more than casual. Uh, that will, will likely involve a tr uh, an extensive travel budget um, and also uh, funds to support long-term uh, visitations between uh, the institutions. Um, so uh, I think that that should be uh, included as part of the budget. There also, sh it seems, should be an effort to encourage networking between funded centers. You know, they'll each have their own strengths and weaknesses. And um, my, I, I can imagine that they would complement each other. Um, so I, I hope that there will be many opportunities for them to, um, to join with each other, to share experiences, um, uh, to even share in their um, sources, sources of mentorship. Great, we'll make sure to ensure to write that into the um, funding opportunity. Thank you, Hal. Iftikhar? Still on mute, Iftikhar. Sorry, I had a suggestion about uh, uh, areas of research emphasis. I don't know whether you'll outline those in the RFA. For example, you know, things that come to my mind readily are what was already discussed was community engagement, but also biobanking and informed consent. Uh, I presume that um, you know when they, when there are applications, those probably would be included. But it'd be great to have additional cohorts of uh, underrepresented um, uh, groups. My question was: Are these uh, institutions, any of them? able to provide access to native peoples or indigenous peoples or we we're leaving that open on um and we are encouraging tribal colleges to come in for this opportunity um but we're leaving it open as to which populations they study we're assuming because as kyle pointed out a lot of the institutions fall within communities that are underserved there will be a large underserved populations within their studies that's an area of desperate need. Uh, I know it's a very tough one, but yes, it'd be we great agree. If this program could help kind of get them into the fold for population and genomics research. We do plan to, um, if this um, concept goes forward into funding opportunities and uh, it's published, we do plan to do a lot of um, outreach to these. Um, institutions to make sure they're aware of the funding opportunity. Thank you. Other questions or comments for Ebony? Okay, can I have a motion to approve the concept? Second. Ooh. All in favor? Anyone opposed or anyone abstaining? Okay. Thank you, Ebony. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much.